DC Comics brings forth a new version of Superman into a universe composed of dark side energy, and the world will never be the same. Can a younger, unsure Superman save the oppressed workers of the world from the evil capitalism of the Lazarus Corporation? Let's find out in our review of Absolute Superman number one from DC Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Absolute Superman number one. You know, after the first read-through, I'm not sure what to make of Absolute Superman number one. Tonally, if not in specific plot points, writer Jason Aaron's take on the, how should we say, young Man of Steel feels a lot like J. Michael Straczynski's Superman year one. Aaron's Superman is younger, less sure of his place in the world, and still trying to figure out his limits. So year one fans may like this take. However, the first issue suffers from the same problem as Absolute Batman in that the major differences in Superman's origin are actually pretty minor, leaving the rest of the differences to Aaron's, uh, let's call it not so subtle messaging about class distinction, oppressed workers, and environmental issues. In effect, Aaron's Superman presents as the Superman Tom Taylor tried and ultimately failed to create in John Kent, crossed with Zack Snyder's somber Man of Steel, which combined is in no way, shape, or form a compliment. So let's dig in, cover the story, and then we'll talk about what we liked and didn't like. Absolute Superman number one narratively waffles back and forth between the past on Krypton to show what happened and how Superman eventually will come to Earth and his activities now that he's on Earth. In the past, Krypton is heavily mired in an oppressive class system structure. The Science League rules over all as the pinnacle of Kryptonian achievement. Everyone wears the symbol of their class on their clothing at all times. The Science League symbol is their red sun, which looks very familiar to the classic uh, House of L symbol, but it, that doesn't apply in this case. You have other classes, such as the middle management class, and I'm not kidding, that's the name of the class, it's middle management, and the blue collar worker class, or the grunt class if you prefer. Aaron's clever twist is that the blue collar worker class is denoted by the familiar S symbol. So in this version, S doesn't stand for hope, it stands for Blue Collar Worker. Focusing on the flashbacks which describe Kryptonian life, we find Jarrell, a brilliant scientist ready to make his mark in the Science League. He gets booted from consideration for entrance, however, after making a graduation speech railing against the Science League's lack of concern for the Kryptonian environment. Now Jarrell works in the Blue Collar class as a safety inspector for the Crystal Mines. When a mining catastrophe confirms Jor-El's growing suspicion about an environmental catastrophe, the wheels are set in motion for Jor-El to save his son Kal-El, who in this issue stands about eight years old at least. Switching to the present, we catch up with Kal-El, secretly traveling from one location to the next to help oppressed workers who suffer under unsafe working conditions for the omnipresent Lazarus Corporation. Kal-El in the present looks to be about in his early 20s, although a specific age is not given, and he uses his powers to help out low-wage workers in environments such as diamond mines to prevent loss of life and undue hardship. The world isn't aware of Superman in any public sense, since Kal-El travels in civilian clothes, covering his face with scarves and hoodies, which is where you get that sort of year one vibe connection. During his latest mission of mercy in the diamond mines of Brazil, Kal-El is confronted by the armed security squad sent by the Lazarus Corporation to capture this strange being causing trouble at the corporation's facilities around the world. During the brief fight, we learn Kal-El's AI-driven suit acts as a knowledge base, a warning system, and overall source of wisdom, similar to the relationship between, say, Iron Man and his Jarvis AI. The suit is effectively almost a character in and of itself, although you don't see it do much, but you get the idea that it's sentient to a certain degree. The issue ends with the realization that Kal-El doesn't have full control of his powers and has limited ability to store solar energy, so there's some growth and some development that still needs to occur. And finally, the security operative leading the team from Lazarus, who ultimately captures Kal-El, is none other than Lois Lane. So that's the issue. There's a lot more that happens in, but it's a lot of nuances and ins and outs and little pieces of world building, most particularly on Krypton. But overall, if you think about where it starts and where it finishes, it's a lot of very similar background information to the early origin of Superman, but not a lot within the context of a current conflict. So let's talk about the positives and negatives and a little bit about the art so you get a, a sense of the overall vibe of the comic. Starting with the positives. If you had no background on Superman or his Kryptonian lineage, 
Absolute Superman number one makes for a pretty sound jumping on point to connect with the Man of Steel that isn't the original, but close enough to not be a completely alien version of the same character. In other words, it kind of has that Superman feel, but he's different enough from the original Earth Prime or Earth Alpha, if you will, to feel like it's still a separate character. And the setup is done well enough that it feels like a complete origin story rather than borrowing from the Superman that you already know. This is pretty self-contained and pretty well thought out. So if you're looking for the highlight, notwithstanding the art, which we'll talk about in a minute, really it's the technical execution. Generally speaking, Jason Aaron's pacing is solid. The very brief amount of action, which we don't get a lot of, is well done. And it feels like Aaron put a lot of thought into the world building and to develop the foundation for where this Superman is coming from. So in terms of setting up the character, it's a solid issue. Well, let's switch over to the negatives and really the most challenging part about this review. The issue isn't bad on any technical level. So the good and the bad of it really comes down to the creative choices and the X factor that you would say really comes along with, you know, did you have fun? Was this an entertaining comic? Did I enjoy reading it? Tonally, the book is somber to the point of depressing. Everyone and everything is depressed or awful or just not in for a good time. So there's no fun or hope to be found anywhere in this comic. Looking at the issue from another angle, this is a completely new universe. These are characters that should be familiar, but effectively spawned or birthed from dark side energy. That's the whole point of this new universe. However, the dark side energy twists are obvious, but Absolute Superman's differences are variations on the same basic character and history. So they're novel, but not particularly significant. It's the same problem that we had with Absolute Batman. It feels like you're still reading a Batman comic. There are little variations, little twists, little differences, but they're not different enough to make you feel like this is a truly original character. It still feels like you're reading Batman. Now that may be good or bad depending on your point of view and what your expectations are and what you're looking for. But in this case, if we're talking about a new Superman from a new universe with a completely new history, but kind of has that same core, it has more than the same core. So the differences are just trivial. Lastly, kal Kryptonian background and the types of heroics he undertakes on Earth heavily suggest an sort of activist-minded story, which makes the character feel overly grounded. Superman is supposed to be a larger-than-life character, regardless of the universe he comes from or, or the specifics of his origin story, approaching godhood and his abilities and moral compass. So tackling issues of evil corporations and oppressed workers, while those are certainly important causes, I'm not saying that they're not, comes across as Aaron tackling issues that are important to Jason Aaron, but wasted on somebody of Superman's capabilities. This Superman feels, to be frank, weak and small. When you put all those things together, again, there's no technical problem with the issue. The execution is fine, but Aaron's tone and creative choices are glum. You could say it another way, it's just basically, it's not entertaining. And any major changes meant to separate this Superman from the original is at best cosmetic. To put it in simpler terms, it basically feels like it's different simply for the sake of being a little bit different, but it's not different in a compelling way. Let's switch gears here a second and talk about the art. Rafa Sandoval is an amazing artist, so he brings his A-game to every aspect of this issue, from the Kryptonian costume designs to the cinematic panel progression and transitions. Sandoval's style is certainly different than Nick Dragota's work on Absolute Batman, but equal in terms of quality and overall visual appeal. In short, I'm very, very happy with the visual look of this comic. Final thoughts, what do we think about Absolute Superman number one? It imagines a slightly different Superman who comes to Earth as an adult and sets out on his mission to save the oppressed and disadvantaged workers of the world, inspired by a Kryptonian legacy of class discrimination. Jason Aaron's glum take on Superman feels like a cross between John Kent's activist personality mixed with Zack Snyder's dour Man of Steel, sprinkled with a dash of inspiration from Straczynski's Superman Year One. In a world where it's tough to find shining beacons of hope, Absolute Superman chooses not to be that beacon. But at least Rafa Sandoval's art looks fantastic. Therefore, Absolute Superman number one earns a 7.8 out of 10. Broadly, this looks and feels like Superman, but there's no light, there's no hope, and there's no fun, which doesn't give you much reason to come back. A comic's first and foremost priority is to entertain you, and I just wasn't entertained. But what do you think? What are your hopes and dreams for Absolute Superman? Leave a thumbs up if you thought this review was helpful and drop a comment below with which Absolute character is your favorite so far. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the varying covers and preview pages, 
and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support, of course, is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.